Oh yeah, this is called The Elephant in Our Bedroom, and this is the title story from the book Elephants in Our Bedroom, even though the title has a couple of things. Uh, the Elephant in Our Bedroom. Not too long ago, I won an elephant in a card game, and now I keep him in our bedroom. As baffling as it seems, my wife hasn't said a word. It's been like that between us, not talking to each other. Though if anything would induce conversation, I would have thought it would be the elephant in the corner of the room. But it hasn't come up, not the noise, the grocery bills, the level of furniture, not even the shit, which I have to admit is pretty bad. Once, when we were newlyweds, I brought home a puppy, my wife disallowing it immediately. Renters, we couldn't have pets, nothing that breathed air, but there she was, a chocolate spaniel with a white spot over her left eye. The rest of the litter didn't have one, and I was sold. I had already started calling her that spot during the two hours she spent in that old apartment, me laying newspaper and toweling pee. When my wife got home and saw what I'd done, it took her exactly three seconds to throw me out. Spot two. She cited the landlord, my allergies, her lack of interest in loving something new. The man who gave me spot took her back, saying her mark would save her, how someone else would think like I had. Her brothers and sisters, maybe not, might be the gunny sack and a tall bridge for them. Instead of the elephant, I could have picked a 73 Dodge Charger, complete with new paint job, refab engine, 20-inch chrome rims, even fuzzy dice, guaranteed to get any 16-year-old blade, but probably not me, twice as old, and not nearly half as cool. Why the guy who lost the hand had an elephant, I don't know, but he said he could get one, and I believed him. The next day, a truck arrived. The guy led the elephant off the back, smacking it in the ass with a reed, and when he asked where I wanted it, I said the bedroom. When the man suggested the backyard, maybe some sort of stable, I told him it was already October, and my elephant didn't like the cold. Who's does? he said. I tore up the IOU and we shook at it. That's how I came to own an elephant. Later at the Kroger, I bought every head of lettuce in stock, plus a small bag of peanuts, just for fun. I figured my wife would make me get rid of it anyway, my elephant, but as it turned out, the joke was on me. I play games with my elephant when my wife is in the room, hoping she'll take notice, say something, something to initiate a dialogue. I toss my elephant lettuce and cucumbers and cabbages, my elephant catching them all with his trunk and stuffing the prizes into its mouth. I climb the trash can to the dresser and onto its back, then lumber from one side of the room to the other. After a few weeks, he learns how to grab me and place me up there itself, putting me back on the hardwood floor when he's had enough. Teaching him to stand on his, its hind legs has proven difficult, but we're working on it every day. Still, my wife does not mention any of it, bad and odd. She rubs moisturizer into her face, turns page after page of cheesy romances, pulls the cover and covers higher over her head. Part of me thinks I should just bring it up, ask her straight out what she thinks of my elephant, of our elephant. But I don't. It's easier at the end of the day to let it go than force a discussion. Maybe we used to be the type of people who threw things in each other's faces, Spock, for instance, but we're past that now. I like to think it's because we've matured, that we don't speak because we've reached a comfort zone, a point where we know what the other is thinking without having to say anything at all, like twins who finish each other's sentences, only with thoughts. But my wife ignoring the elephant doesn't seem much like progress, like some point in our relationship we should be proud of. Then again, what do I know? I might not know progress if it grabbed me by the neck and squeezed my head clean. I haven't named my elephant yet, just in case my wife does wake up and make me get it back. I wonder if it's still, if I still remember Spot, only because she was Spot, if a nameless pup would have been easier to let go. I imagine taking the elephant back, not to the man with a pair of queens to my three threes, but to the man with the spaniels from years ago. I picture this man draping a large sack over the elephant's ears and tusks and trunk, then rolling it over the guardrail of a tall bridge. I wonder if it would survive the fall, only to drown in the current. Elephants are enormous. You never realize how big till you have one in your bedroom with your wife. And you think they could survive something a dog or a person couldn't, some sort of sliding scale of survival, of ruggedness. Even without a name, the image of my elephant dying that way makes me cringe. I almost weep at such a miserable thought. I've lost so much already, everything much smaller, but falling from the same insurmountable height 